Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this week's lesson, I want to look at a few ways we can make our lessons more dynamic. Uh, so hopefully in this video, you'll find some ideas that can help make your lessons a little bit less predictable and a little bit more lively. So let's go. We'll start off with teaching vocabulary. So uh, two favorites of mine are Pictionary and Charades. So both very, very simple. They require very little planning. Pictionary, once you've got your, your selected language, very simple, create two teams, have a student from one team come up to the whiteboard, give them a marker and show them one of the words uh, you've been teaching. That student then attempts to draw a picture in order to communicate the word to the rest of the class. Whichever team can guess the word correctly first uh, receives a point. Charades, uh, just a slight variation on this, instead of drawing, the students are miming. Uh, and one thing I've actually had a lot of fun with in the past is for charades, uh, and this will be more useful for, for higher level classes, but um, idiom charades. So instead of just using one word, uh, the students must attempt to mime an idiom. So think of expressions like to have a skeleton in the closet, you know, when you've got a, a dark secret or um, other expressions like to give someone a hand, you know, it could be, uh, it could be a lot of fun. And, you know, to get even more students involved, instead of having one student mind, you could have them mind the idiom in pairs. Last man standing is another good way to make uh, vocabulary a little bit more lively. So get all your students up, uh, stand standing in a circle uh, yeah this can be a great way to review some vocabulary if you've taught it maybe in the previous class you can begin your next lesson with this so all of the students are standing up in a circle they could throw uh, an object around whoever catches the object must then think of a word from a particular category or whatever vocabulary you previously taught so if it's a lower level class maybe the topic was food types of fruit and vegetables somebody catches the object and they need to say banana they throw to another student apple etc so if a student cannot think of another word or they repeat a word that has already been said by another student then both sit down the winner is the last student standing so again there's an element of uh, competitiveness about all these activities that can really help to make a lesson more dynamic Stop the bus, another great way to review vocabulary. Uh, so this is a personal favorite of mine. Divide your class into teams and the teacher chooses a topic. One member of each team must then write three words that fit into the topic. So let's stay with uh, the topic of fruit and vegetables. So the teacher says three fruits. The students write down uh, three examples of fruit that they can think of. Uh, whichever team finishes first puts the pen down and shouts, stop the bus. Ask that team for their three words. For each correct word, you can give the team a point. So for example, team A finishes first, stop the bus. First word, apple. Very good, you check, spelled correctly. Excellent, one point. Next word, orange brilliant two points and the third word banana however members of the other teams have written this word also so nobody receives a point so the objective here is to try to be original try to think of words you don't think the other teams will have thought of uh, and it's, it's quite a flexible activity you know so the example I gave you know you're using it for vocabulary food you can also use it for grammar, you know, uh, three irregular verbs, three verbs in the past participle form, um, you know, three past simple sentences. If another group has chosen the same verb, no points. So a very flexible activity and great for reviewing vocabulary, but also, also other language points. Bingo. All right. So another, another classic, uh, so let's see. 
we'll, we'll stay with the topic of verbs. Uh, so you've got a list of irregular verbs. Perhaps you're teaching irregular verbs to a pre-intermediate or an elementary class. You give the students the bingo card, perhaps have them in pairs or, or threes, and you call out the infinitive form of the verb. They must find the past simple form on the piece of paper. Or perhaps instead of using words, you could use images. So once again, the teacher calls out a verb, but on the bingo card on the piece of paper, there are images displaying the action to the corresponding verbs. Uh, to add even more challenge, instead of uh, using the same words or the same verbs, you could use synonyms. So perhaps you're teaching adjectives to describe, you know, places. So you know you could have a have an adjective like breathtaking, okay, breathtaking scenery, for example. Uh, however, on the piece of paper, the synonym might be stunning or beautiful, you know, so they're not using the same words, but they're using words with similar meaning. So this can really test their, their understanding of the vocabulary and, and further expand their vocabulary at the same time. Uh, and another variation here, instead of synonyms, antonyms. So use words with the opposite meaning. Teacher says good, the student marks bad on the piece of paper. Taboo, all right. Uh, this could be a lot of fun. So, very simple. One member of a team comes up to the front of the room. Uh, a member of another team writes a word on the board behind them. And preferably, you know, the, the target language, whatever, whatever you've been teaching previously. Um, now, the student's team, this is the student who, who's, who's sitting, uh, facing the opposite way to the board. That student's team must explain to the student what word is written on the board behind them, but they cannot use the word to explain. So the students need to be really creative and really careful with their with their explanations. You know, another variation is uh, with upper intermediate before I was teaching verbs of the senses. You know, so using the verbs of the senses to to describe things. So. You know, it sounds great. It sounds like a famous song. Oh, it, it sounds as if you aren't feeling well. So using these different variations with the verbs of the senses. So again, you could uh, put an image on the board or if you've got an electronic whiteboard, use that to display an image. One student faces the opposite way and that student's team must use the verbs of the senses to describe it so perhaps you show an image of a, a food the students must use you know it tastes delicious it tastes a little bit like chicken uh, etc so again that could be uh, a lot of fun treasure hunts so yeah another another flexible activity here um so i've had a i've had some fun in the past doing treasure hunts with um with functional language for, for giving directions, you don't go straight, turn left. So in this case, the students would create an obstacle course and maybe you, you have a small prize at the end of the obstacle course. Uh, one volunteer will then agree to blindfold themselves. Uh, you know, you can use a scarf or whatever uh, as the blindfold. And that student's team guides them through the obstacle course using the target language. You know, go straight, turn left, stop turn right for the obstacles you can use any you know available objects whatever if you're in the classroom use some chairs etc <laughs> i've just of course um, emphasized that the students take care uh you don't want any accidents happening um another variation with treasure hunts is you could use prepositions of location so you could hide an object somewhere either in the classroom or, or perhaps on, on that floor of the school um, and encourage the students to ask you some questions using preposition of location. So is let's say you hide a mobile phone, for example. Is the phone near the classroom? 
is the phone opposite something is it under something is it in something are the students using using these questions and using this language can help um, can uh, can locate the object okay so there are just some ways we can uh, we can make teaching vocabulary a little bit more lively and dynamic what about teaching grammar so while teaching grammar uh, I think it's really important not just to elicit the language in the same way always so you know don't just use your textbook all the time to elicit the target language uh, add some variety so perhaps use a photograph um, maybe a short video you could tell a story something that happened to you or just make something up so for example let's say you're teaching articles you could begin telling the students a, a story so just a, a simple example you know i was walking home from from work yesterday and i saw a beautiful dog on the other side of the road but the dog was was barking so you can use just this you know short simple story these sentences to elicit you know uh, the target language so in this case articles i saw a dog the indefinite article used for the first time i mentioned something the dog was barking i've mentioned it before we know what i'm talking about therefore we use the definite article so just a simple uh, example of ways you can you can elicit the target language in in different ways of course there's you know there's nothing wrong with using the textbook at all uh, but i guess what we want to avoid here is becoming too predictable because predictability kills uh, motivation and it, it can ruin lessons so the more variety uh, we have here the better and the more dynamic your classes will be also don't forget to elicit some examples of the target language from your students we don't want just the teacher to be talking and talking and talking during the grammar presentation we want to keep our teacher talk uh, teacher talking time to a minimum so encourage your students to elicit some examples and you know try to try to make the examples relevant so maybe you have a student in the class who who loves football target language is to pass simple Thiago played football yesterday uh, so again just by using students in the class in the in the examples it, it can make it uh, make it more memorable easier for the students to to relate to the target language yeah and, um, it's important to not just add variety to the way we present the target language but also to the way we correct so let's say you've completed your grammar presentation you've elicited some examples now it's time for some controlled practice so the students complete uh, let's say a gap fill exercise and pairs and it's time to correct well, instead of just, you know, asking one student, okay, question one, now the student beside them, question two, question three, uh, you can add a bit of variety to this by using a prop. So this little guy here is Romario, uh, and he's become quite popular with my students. And it's a really, really simple idea. Basically, throw Romario to uh, a student, or whatever your object is, whatever you decide to, to call it, that student then answers the question. If they're correct, they then choose another student to answer the next one. So they throw the ball to the next student. Uh, this is a good way of ensuring you keep the student's attention for the duration of the correction. So, you know, if we have a predictable uh, correction pattern, once the student answers the question, you know, it's quite possible they'll, they'll switch off. You know, oh, I've done my part now. I won't be asked again. So this is... Uh, one way you can ensure the students keep keep paying attention because they don't know who's going to be asked next it, it could be them uh role plays love role plays so you've done your control practice it's time for some for your practice so some you know popular examples of role plays let's say the target language is question forms job interview role plays can be a lot of fun you assign an interviewer and a candidate the, the interviewer creates some questions using the target language the candidate must uh, answer the questions uh, you could have you know let's say six interviewers six candidates the candidates attend six different interviews 
you could make it even more interesting. You could you could assign different jobs for the interviewers, maybe some dream jobs, uh, so like ice cream taster, uh, you know, Netflix watcher, um, water slide tester, you know, just to make it a bit more a bit more interesting, a bit more fun. And candidates attend the interviews set a time limit, you know, four minutes maybe for a higher level class and at the end of the interviews once the candidates have attended all the interviewers the interviewers must then decide which candidate they they thought was the best based on the um, the interview they did so it can be a lot of fun speed dating is another good way to um to practice question forms also you know uh adjectives of personality you know i'm an outgoing person or i'm looking for someone who is sensible um speed dating is another good one uh, I'm also I'm a big fan of alibi so uh, basically what alibi is uh, you could well basically you've got detectives and suspects in a crime and the te detectives must interview the suspects about a crime to determine if the suspects are guilty or innocent so the target language here it could be uh, past simple and uh, past continuous so where were you last night at 10 o'clock oh I was watching TV with my friends I'm, I'm innocent so that kind of language here uh, and a way you could you could make it even more dynamic more engaging you could begin by telling the students a, a story you know you could say oh guys did you did you hear the news and they're like no what news I'm like yeah the, there was a robbery last night in the school and um, the suspects are actually some students and I guarantee this will immediately get their attention you know they'll be looking around the room um, so it's a great way to get them engaged from the beginning of the activity uh, a colleague of mine Rose she she made it even more uh, more interesting her variation is uh, she tells the class that a hard drive has been stolen from the school with bank details or credit card information so you know the students will be really really engaged and of course they'll, they'll realize it's just a joke but it's it's a good way of getting their attention and, and leading into the activity um yeah and always you know at the end of your your grammar portion of the the class you know whatever the language focus is here uh i think it's important to finish with some error correction so a good way to get the whole class involved in the error correction is, you know, maybe during the free practice activity uh, or the role play, you could be monitoring, no noting down some some mistakes related to the target language. Uh, put these examples up on the whiteboard. Um, just sit back, leave a marker there. Say, guys, have a look. Uh, do you see anything wrong with these sentences? What can we do to make them grammatically correct? I'm just let the class do the work they can work together um, one student could come up to the board make a change put the marker down another student comes up makes another change and again keep your teacher talk time to to a minimum during this portion of the class uh, let the students do the work here and after you then could uh, could clear up any doubts or um, confusion the students may have about the, the target language all right, and uh, I'll finish just with, with some other ideas, you know, to make your class more lively or more dynamic. So some things that have, have worked for me in the past. So setting time challenges, I think, is a good way. So maybe, you know, you've just got an ordinary task, uh, match definitions with vocabulary in a text, quite a predictable, ordinary activity. So one way you can make it a little bit more engaging is, you know, guys, oh, how long do you think it will take you to find all the, the missing words here? And, you know, you might get some, some ideas of three minutes, four minutes. Do you think you can do it in less than four minutes? Okay, let's see. And, you know, set set the challenge for the class. Or make it a race. Let's see who can finish first. Now, of course, if you if you make it a race, <laughs> it's important to still emphasize that the students do the activity correctly. You know, they're not rushing and making lots of, of mistakes. It must be completed, but it must be completed correctly. Um... Also, I, I think I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I think it's really important to regularly change the seating arrangement. You know, not just to, to deal with any 
problematic students or you know groups of uh, uh, problematic students but also just to keep the lesson fresh you know if, if your students are sitting beside the same person so for example our classes in Aaron are three hours long so if the same two students are working together for three hours you know the lesson can be a little bit less interesting I think it's better when the students are working with different people working in pairs for some activities working in threes for other activities groups for other activities so, you know it's it's good to, to regularly change the seating you know sometimes when you change you might get some looks at the students you know some maybe groans and oh we're moving again but I uh, you know it's definitely definitely uh, a positive thing for the lesson in in, in my experience uh, board races great so board race very simple um, can be a nice way to review pronunciation or if you're teaching some uh, phonemes you know some sounds so you could put two symbols on the board you know you could have the phoneme let's take vowel sounds for example so you could have the, the E you know the long vowel sound you could have E and I on the board so you could put each of these phonemes on the board divide the class into teams two teams three teams uh give one member of each team a marker and tell them to stand a distance away from the board teacher then says one word now the word you say will have one of the three uh sounds one of the three phonemes uh in it the students must listen carefully and run to the board and write the word they heard with the correct phoneme so let's take the word you know sheet like a, a sheet of paper so the students hear sheet oh the sound is e they run to the board and they must write the word in the correct portion of the board with the with the phoneme e and also their spelling must be correct too so it's a good way of reviewing pronunciation but also their their listening skills uh and speaking of pronunciation so you know of course as teachers it's important we drill you know this can be quite a monotonous process you know sheet 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 quite repetitive so you could add some variety here one thing i do you know i could ask okay just all the girls in the class sheet oh that was pretty good guys you know boys can you do better sheet mm, you know i'm not sure so again <laughs> introduce an element of competition to the way uh the way you're doing it if you've got a a multilingual class or you know a class with, with several different nationalities you say okay let's hear the Italians oh pretty good what about the Brazilians you know so just a, a little bit more variety and you can even encourage the students oh you know uh, ask the Italians what they thought of the Brazilians pronunciation maybe give them a score out of out of 10 so just little little things like that can make it more interesting you know people born uh, between January to June people born between July to December so lots of different variations all right guys so yeah just a, a few ideas that that could hopefully help you to uh, liven up your your class a little bit make it make it a bit more dynamic and engaging for your students but, but what about you you know uh, there are lots and lots of different ways we can do this so what works for you I'd be really curious uh, to hear so please share in the comments in the live chat um it would be it would be great to see that um as always guys thank you very very much for watching i hope you have a fantastic week uh, i'll see you next time cheers